So I've been playing a ton of Black Ops 6 recently, so much so that it's been delaying my next video quite a bit. Uh, the game is actually really good. The multiplayer is fun, the zombies mode is amazing, and the campaign has great gameplay and story. But now that I've beaten it, I am now realizing that I found it to be a little disappointing, actually. Not because of the lack of returning characters or anything like that, but because of the lack of history and connection to real world events, despite it taking place in the early 1990s. Luckily, I am not the only person who sees this. Now, I personally believe that the 1990s has some of the most interesting and coolest history, as this is what is generally called the New World Order, which is the time period between the Cold War and the War on Terror. Uh, there were so many little conflicts that came from the fall of the Soviet Union and the general decolonization of the Third World, resulting in the deaths of millions of people and the making of foreign policy that affects us even today. None of which gets brought up in Black Ops 6, sadly. But before I get into that, let us look at the older Black Ops games to see how much focus on real events that they had and compare it to this. And this isn't to say that those games were documentaries per se, but they did have a feeling of brutal authenticity that introduced this late 20th century history to the general audience. Kind of like how Battlefield 1 was authentic but not 100% accurate to World War 1, if you follow my meaning. The first Black Ops takes place in the late 1960s, with most of the story being flashbacks. While this game's general plot is fiction, the basis for a lot of it, you know, brainwashing, covert ops, were all things that generally did happen back then. Uh, the developers had a bunch of real history to use when creating the story. We see the Bay of Pigs invasion, the Soviet Gulags, President Kennedy, Operation Azofiahum, much of the Vietnam War, Kowloon, and even Mount Yamantau, which there is a rumored base there in real life. The Vietnam missions didn't mess around either. We see some nastiness, sneaking around the swamp, defending from waves of Viet Cong, clearing rat tunnels, even becoming POWs in a memorably graphic scene. The game opens up with the real life Operation 40, and we even try to assassinate Fidel Castro, a real life historical person thing. Hell, they even just flat out say that in the end, not only did the CIA assassinate JFK, but it was your character, Mason, that did it. And this was back when Call of Duty had balls, you see. Black Ops 2 is in a unique place in that the main story takes place in the near future. You'd think that that would make the game have less history going for it, but nope. In fact, this game just crams historical event after historical event in the flashbacks, which actually leads to a tight narrative and the theme of how evil the CIA is. The flashbacks of Black Ops 2 are in the late 1980s and cover quite a bit of recent and forgotten events. There is the second Angolan Civil War, where we help real-life warlord Jonas Avimbi, and then we go to Afghanistan during the Russian invasion where we help the Mujahideen. In fact, there is a spot in the end of that mission where they betray us and tell us that we are and always will be their true enemy, which wasn't a random bit of dialogue if you know what this will lead to in September of 2001. Hell, the opening cutscene of Black Ops 2, we are told that Raul Menendez is the most dangerous terrorist since Osama bin Laden. And I will come back to that point later. We then get involved in the Nicaraguan Revolution, which relates to the infamous Iran-Contra affair. Funnily enough, Oliver North not only makes an appearance in the game, but voices himself, because why not? And our last flashback is during Operation Just Cause, aka our invasion of Panama. We even get to manhandle Manuel Noriega during the mission. Black Ops 2 is my favorite story in all of Call of Duty, and it's partially because this game introduced to me all these crazy real-world events that were just never taught to us in school. I mean, isn't it crazy that we invaded Panama in 1989 and were successful? I feel like this and the Gulf War were like the last two conflicts in which the US just flat out came out on top, no question. But no one ever talks about it. And then we come to the current Call of Duties where, while the gameplay is always getting better and the characters are getting more in-depth, there is a lack of true history going on. Let's look at Black Ops Cold War real quick. While this game feels a bit drier and smaller than the first two Black Ops, there is still some history to be had. Black Ops Cold War takes place in the early 1980s. While we have our returning characters like Mason, Woods, and Hudson, they take a backseat to the newer characters like Adler and Bell. This game definitely feels like the 80s, with the setting and places and music. And that's a point in its favor, no issue. The story follows our team going after the Soviet spy known as Perseus, 
who was an actual hypothetical spy that the CIA speculated on in real life. We start the game chasing these guys who were involved in the Iran hostage crisis. We then meet President Reagan, we have a flashback to Vietnam, albeit it feels more like a prettier version of the place we went to in the original Black Ops. We do some sneaking near the Berlin Wall, enter a secret Soviet base that replicates an American town, which was based on rumored Soviet facilities that trained their spies to blend into America. We then go to the Lubyanka building and meet General Secretary Gorbachev. The brainwashing of our protagonist, Bell, is loosely based on CIA stuff like MKUltra. Lastly, and if you pick the bad ending of the game, the climax will take place near the Duga radar. While there is some good history in Black Ops Cold War, my main gripe is that it just feels like a smaller story with less stakes compared to the previous games. However, since this was called Black Ops Cold War and not just Black Ops 5, maybe it was meant to be a small little story in the larger Black Ops universe, before things go bad and Mason and Hudson get killed. And then we come to this new game, Black Ops 6, which brings us to 1991. The Cold War is just about over, and the Gulf War is underway. At this point, Woods is reeling in from the events of Black Ops 2, while helping the new characters in dealing with Pantheon, a group of rogue CIA operatives. Pantheon, as far as I can tell, are completely fictional. We do get their motivation at the end of the story, however. And this is where I will give Black Ops 6 praise. Pantheon exists to set up a false flag attack on DC to frame the current director and replace him with Harrow, who is one of the leaders of Pantheon. She mentions how they would have framed Saddam Hussein for the attack and use it as an excuse to really push the New World Order thing. But past that, and the few Gulf War missions which I will admit they do capture that aesthetic well, Black Ops 6 has very little historical context. Yeah, sure, you see Bill Clinton from a distance, but there is literally no one else from that first teaser. No H.W., no Powell, no Thatcher, hell, there's not even any Saddam, just mentions of him. Even the 90s setting is very honed in, like it only takes place in the 90s because it's a fair amount of time after Black Ops Cold War and 2. The story itself feels small, almost as small as Cold War, but at least that was meant to be a little one-off story. This is called Black Ops 6, a numbered entry in the Black Ops series, and it adds nothing, really. Now, that is not to say that the story or the campaign of Black Ops 6 is bad. Definitely not. I actually found it to be intriguing in itself. The story of these new characters was captivating. I thought the gameplay was fantastic, and that it actually takes advantage of the new mechanics brought over from Warzone, unlike the slop that was last year's Modern Warfare 3. That is something I've noticed. The campaigns from Modern Warfare 19 and onward have felt much more low-key, but there's a lot more focus on the individual characters rather than being a part of an army against a larger enemy. Like the games, they want you to feel like you are a specialist going on fire missions rather than a random soldier who is part of a larger machine, which sort of goes against what Call of Duty is meant to be, I think. In fact, have you noticed that all of these campaigns, the bad guy faction is never defeated? Sure, you might kill a figurehead of the organization, but the organization itself is allowed to live so that the characters can fight against them in Warzone in the DLC. I mean, look at Pantheon, Avalon, Perseus, Las Alamas, Alcatala, and the Ultranationalists. No matter what happens in the campaign, the bad guy group will never be defeated, just so that the DLC can exist. Let's talk about something important. Now, why do I care? What is so cool about the world history of the 1990s? Well, I find the time period between the Cold War and 9-11 to be quite fascinating. There's a phrase I mentioned before, the New World Order. This term refers to any sort of dramatic change in world politics, and sadly, it is also known for an anti-Semitic conspiracy, hence why the new Captain America movie is now called Brave New World. Which sucks, because the term New World Order sounds so fucking cool. But what is it? What is the New World Order? In 1990, the Soviet Union was falling apart. So the threat that they possessed against the Western world was quickly shrinking. During that time, Saddam Hussein was pissing off the world by invading Kuwait because they owed the country a lot of money for the Iran-Iraq war. At that time, Saddam Hussein had the fourth largest military in the entire world, so they were somewhat of a threat. Enough of a threat to frighten the Saudi royal family into asking the US for help. So President Bush, the first one, looks at this as an opportunity to show the world who the big swinging dick is, stating in a speech that once the US proves that we can handle this threat, that we will be the sole superpower of the world, which will usher in a new world order that should have led to peace. 
It is with heavy irony that this speech took place on September 11th, 1990. And so, the US forms a coalition and absolutely dusts Saddam's forces in Operation Desert Storm. Later that year, the Soviet Union officially collapses. The New World Order is now a reality. So how did the US do with this power? Well, one of the first things the US did in this New World Order was getting involved in the Somali Civil War, trying to help the people during the famine that the war caused, and by trying to capture the SNA leader. This led to the Battle of Mogadishu, aka Black Hawk Down, the deadliest battle for US troops since the Vietnam War. This was a major blow to the morale of the US and UN leaders. It may have even influenced President Clinton to not get involved in the Rwandan genocide which occurred in the next year. Fun fact, when I was younger, one of our neighbors was in Delta Force. Apparently, he is a bad motherfucker and was actually involved in Black Hawk Down. Another reason why I find this era of military history to be so damn cool. Then there's the fall of Yugoslavia, which resulted in a bunch of wars and conflicts and even a genocide. It took British Prime Minister Blair to convince Clinton to get involved in Kosovo to fight off Milosevic. That also blows my mind. In school, we were taught about how horrible genocides are, always focusing on the Holocaust, and just now they're starting to teach about the Rwandan genocide. The fact that Rwanda and Bosnia happened in the same decade, not too long ago, is crazy. Millions of innocent people brutally murdered, and barely anyone knows about it. And there is still so much other bloodshed that occurred in the 90s. There were the IRA attacks early in the decade, Russia had a bunch of wars in Georgia and Chechnya, so many civil wars throughout the world including Sierra Leone and Algeria. And it wasn't exactly 100% peachy over in the United States either. We had the LA riots, Ruby Ridge, and Waco. And during all of this, Saddam Hussein was still trying to piss us off in Iraq. New world order my ass, people are still killing each other. But important to my point is the Afghan civil war, which led to the Taliban taking control of the country. And there were also a bunch of terrorist attacks by Al Qaeda, from the Kenya embassy bombing to the coal bombing, all of which leads to, well, you know. On September 11th, 2001, the United States realized that despite our reach and power over the world, we really didn't have shit. And thus, the war on terror that we still have today. And so, to cap off this rambling, here is what I propose to be in the next Black Ops game. Black Ops 7, Black Ops New World Order, or whatever you want to do. This will bring the series back to its roots, and boy howdy will there be controversy. In my mind, Black Ops 7 takes place in late 2001, when the US invades Afghanistan. Our leads will be at a loss for words. How did this massive attack happen under our noses? How does Frank Woods react to 9-11? And to get these answers, they go around and try to piece the puzzle with flashbacks. Go back to the Soviet-Afghan war, how the CIA funded the group that would become Al-Qaeda. Flashback to the Gulf War, it was our presence in the Arabian Peninsula that really pissed off Bin Laden. Show Black Hawk Down, because there were some links to that event in this. Maybe show some of those Russian wars that I mentioned before, because they did have some terrorism involved. Have terrorism be the main theme of the game, actually. Get the IRA involved. There is literally so much you can do, and it all fits in with the past games. The Soviet-Afghan war and the Gulf War have been in Black Ops before. They show that the Mujahideen did not like us, and Bin Laden was literally mentioned by name for Christ's sake. The CIA in real life did know that the hijackers were in America. Maybe they could blame that on Pantheon, or even on the terrorist guys in the Modern Warfare games since those are now canon too. You know what? Make this the final of the Black Ops games in that this is when the story shifts from the past to the present. I mean, 9-11 was a paradigm shift in every facet of life. It's why the original Modern Warfare franchise exists. It is the perfect opportunity to bring it all together. Have a young Captain Price or so watch the attack on live TV and that could be the reason why they became operators. Maybe Woods meets them and symbolically passes the torch. I don't know, I'm starting to reach here, but there's so much potential in this idea. And earlier this year, when Black Ops 6 was announced, there were memes of this game having 9-11 in it. I know Activision wants to play it safe and just make everything fictional so no real group gets hurt, but if they had the balls to say, yes, 9-11 is the main point of the game, I guarantee you people will buy that game just for the campaign. And if this comes out in the next cycle of COD games, this will likely be more than 25 years since the actual attack. That's enough distance to make something good and respectful. No one of rational mind would be offended by this. I mean, sure, you'll have your grifting shitheads with their clickbait, but those losers are going to exist anyway, so screw it. Plus, think about how this game could educate the masses on why 9-11 really happened. But yes, that is my random rambling for the day. 
I hope you guys enjoyed. I mentioned before that my next video was delayed by me playing Black Ops 6 a lot, that video being an in-depth ranking of all the X-Men films, from worst to best. And I mean in depth, like this bad boy is like two and a half hours long. I spent like a month making this thing. Uh, but if that sounds cool to you, please subscribe to me and you'll know when it comes out. But until then, I am Donker Dank. Thank you for listening.